Hello, we're back with our oil painting for beginners. The whole class is here. We miss the ones that are not here. So I'm going to go over real quick the grisaille method, which is when you have a black and white. And let me show you some options. When you start black and white uh, and then just scrub in some color over it. Um, this is a black and white. This is grisaille. And then I did another sample where I just used, instead of black and white, I used raw umber and white. Um, so I'm going to show real quick how this method works. Because you're basically separating the painting pro process from, black, from dark and light, and then you color it. As opposed to making all your decisions at the same time. So it's a lot easier for the beginner. It also looks a little bit more old fashioned, it's very smooth. You have a lot of layers, so you can let it dry, very slow process. Um, and again, like I said, um, most of the oil painters nowadays, I'd say 90 to 95% will not use this method. All right, so two methods to add a layer to your thing, to your painting, is um, you either scrub in some dry color, so you pick up your dry brush, you don't dip it into anything, and let's say, I'm going to start with the grapes and I'm going to make them a dark um, red. So I'm going to use my Elizabeth Crimson. I dip it in. I don't know if you can see that. Just a little bit and add just a little bit of blue to make it a little bit purplish. So this is a smidge. I mean, a whisper of color, very dry, no medium. And I'm going to scrub this in. And I'm going to just scrub this over my whole grape here because I already decided and worked out my values, my darks and my lights. So with one 10 second brush stroke, I have a finished grape. Well, almost finished. We're going to do a little bit more on that. Um, so that is one method. So you can do everything that's the grapes. You can finish that with that thing. The other method is to glaze over it instead of the dry um, brushing um, you can glaze it and you use a lot of medium which I have the gal kit light or you can use the what is it called again this is called a uh, liquid the liquid that's good because it's more jelly this is more liquidy so the gel really works a little bit better um, so again I have my red my grape color some red and I dip my brush into the gel into the medium to make it very um, liquidy and then I just again glaze over I'll do the next grape here so this is more wet but it has the same effect hopefully that's visible does it give it more of a sheen yes definitely because any medium usually has some gloss sheen to it so yes but then again you remedy that by when you finished everything and some parts are sh more shiny and some are not then you varnish over it and that will take care of the whole thing where it's, you know, some is shiny and some not. Yeah, that is very distracting. It so... It hmm? seems to pick up more of the color too with the, the medium. I mean, you're seeing more depth. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so try it out. But since the method is really called glazing, it's probably more that you glaze with it rather than doing the dry brushing. Okay, I'm going to finish these grapes here. Just have a little bit less blue in this particular one. Blue. Yeah, because I wanted to make it more purplish than red. So, I, you know, I mixed red and blue. All right, now see how quickly that goes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my grapes are all done. <laughs> all right, and they look pretty good. At least they have two values because I started with, you know, dark and light. Mm -hmm. We'll do a little bit of highlighting. Um, but that goes very fast. That's the key to grisaille painting, the black and white underpainting, that that really... Um, gives a whole effect to the painting. The color, and it's in all painting, the color is secondary. What's more important is that your lights and darks are in the right place and that they're strong enough. Again, if you just have all medium grays and a dark gray and a light gray, then you're in the middle of the value scale. You're not all the way on the extreme spectrum of black and white then it becomes a wishy-washy painting. So you want to be very strong. You want to have a really stark dark and a really stark light. Then you get that whole thing. It's more graphic and it's more 
easily recognizable. Okay, so again, when you do this kind of painting, you want to really make sure that your underpainting is perfect. And then you just, as you can see, I mean, I could finish this whole painting in like 10 minutes. Just put some color on there. Okay, um, I'm gonna clean my brush a little bit and I'm gonna do the pear. Now the pear is um, like a yellow green. So I'm gonna use a yellow and I put a little bit of the blue in there. And I'm, I'm gonna use the glazing method. So I mix that and I'm gonna wash over this whole pear. Okay, now, if for some reason you think it's too much color, you can at any time, and you can paint with paper towels anyway, you can take some of the color off if it's too much. Just made it a little bit more subtle. Um, and then you can add more, whatever, you know. So you can play with that. Um, in our photo, I know that the picture is like a creamy, a creamy white. Um, but when I did it with the other classes, I said, you don't have to make it a creamy white. Just, you can turn it into a blue one, a blue picture, or light blue. Someone did a green one. So whatever you want. At this point, you can just really decide at that point what you want to do. Um, how do you make cream? <laughs> I think that's why I said, don't try to make a creamy picture. Because, <laughs> like, what's that color? <laughs> um, I mean, I would just probably... Let's, um, because you can't really glaze with white too much because it's so, it covers too much. But let's say it's a creamy pitcher, let's do white with a little bit of the warm yellow. See this color? Oh, yeah. Let's try that. Because again, it mixes with whatever's underneath. In your case, it's black and white underneath, so it should stay with that color. With mine, it mixes with that kind of greenish brown. So mm -hmm. we'll see what that looks like. And again, I have my color and I'm gonna paint over the whole, whatever is the picture, that's what I'm gonna cover. Let's see. Yeah, when you do white, it gets very, very dark. I mean, it covers a lot. It's not very translucent. Yeah. As you can see. So maybe a lot more of the medium. Let's see here. So if you use too much white, you lose your shading. Is that yes, you can't really glaze with white because it's so, it has so much covering power. Mm -hmm. You think white would be the opposite? Mm -hmm. Huh? You think white would be the opposite? It would be the least amount of no, white is a very strong color, and it's just, yeah. yeah See how I kind of lost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, how I kind of brushed with basically white over my dark shadows of the picture, and see how I lost the darkness of it? It mm -hmm. actually is even lighter. So, yeah, that's why I said don't try to make a creamy white picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Add some color to it. So I'm going to rub it off. All right, but you get the idea. Um, and then just real quick, I'm gonna just hint at the background. Um, once you have your elements done, your background should really be last because what's more important? Are you painting a background? Am I painting the wall behind my stuff or am I painting my object? Same in a landscape. The sky is not very important. That's why I always tell you guys, I, most people paint the background last. The sky is secondary. Unless you're just painting a cloud picture and then it's very important. But your objects, the trees, the houses, the people, the objects are the most important. So you want to deal with that here because most of the time you don't even know exactly what color you're going to do. To you. So once you have your colors there, now I can decide, well, what background color will complement that? If I had started with a background color, then that color, which is, again, not important, would have influenced my decision on these colors, and it would have been maybe something totally different. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Um, maybe a nice reddish color. So, again, I'm just going to glaze it in there. Ah! Now, what is that? I mean, are you, are you is that a table? Gonna huh? do, are you going to leave this? 
Yeah, I'm gonna leave that for now. I just oh. wanna, I want you guys to get painting here. Okay. <laughs> but let me see. And again, some of the colors are more strong. They have more tinting strength. For example, I just dipped into the cadmium red. Oh my God, way too much. I mean, I can't even get rid of all this color on my brush. So let's see. I'm gonna brush it in here. <laughs> so would you uh, use turpentine to, turn, to clean your brush? To, to, mm -hmm. Did he get too much or just wipe yeah. it off? Yeah, wipe pattern? it off or yeah, if you really have to use your turpentine, yeah. Let's see here. So let me put this away. So now I'm gonna do a nice light red on the background. Let's see what it looks like. I mean, if you put that on and decide it's not that great, you can still wipe it off. So I just went around my main option. That looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little stark with the red red, but it's not bad. And I can, you know, make it a little bit more subtle by wiping a little bit off. Okay. So that's not bad. So it has a little tint to it. It's not that boring, you know, raw umber. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So what we do next is kind of a transition to our Alla Prima, which we're going to do next. Um, which is, you know, you just make all your decisions at once. You mix your dark colors and your light colors, and then that's it. We're not separating dark and light and then color. Um, that is what I did on this painting here. Um, I did the same thing here for my other classes as I did here as a demo. But then, it's a, see, it's a little boring, especially some of the highlights are not there. So you can actually then mix a nice highlight color or several other colors and kind of enhance it because this is a little bit kind of boring. It kind of stays too much in, in those middle values. So what I would do, for example, I'll show it on the pear. Um, let me wash this. So it dries pretty quick. You can just go right on top with another, or you gotta. Yeah, I mean, again, it depends on the colors, cadmiums, you know, dry. But if you dry brush it on, I would say it probably dries within an hour. The glazing depends if you have a, a quick drying medium that you use for glazing. Yeah, because it's so thin, probably by in about three, four hours. Okay. And you can always wait and then say, you know, next, like I come back tomorrow and say, oh, that's a little too wishy-washy. I want to strengthen some colors so you can glaze over it again. Um, okay, let's see here. So on the pear, for example, right here where the pear sits on the ground, on the tabletop, that should be really the darkest color. So maybe my underpainting wasn't really that great, or I just want to make it even more dark here. Um, I'm going to just take a nice green and put that in there. So now again, this is like a la prima, where I'm actually mixing now a dark green. I'm not relying on my underpainting. And you would do this once this is dry. No. I can do that now, yeah. Because I'm only painting my very last layer on here. So let's see here. Sorry, I can't paint. <laughs> but here, you can see. See how that is a nice dark green? That kind of now enforces the shadow of the pear laying there on the ground and the light hitting it from the top. So there would be no color, no light hitting that part of the pear. So I'm going to just brush that on. And there you go. See, now I have three values. I have a shadow, I have the mid-tone, and I have kind of a highlight or the lighter part of my pair. So now I'm going to add a little highlight. So I have a um, nice creamy greenish yellow up here. Mm -hmm. So the highlight, I'm just going to add a smidge of white to it. Um, I'm going to mix that up real quick. And I think that It's a little too dirty because I didn't wash it. But you can see a little bit, it's just very subtle. Don't overdo it with like a highlight. So now we're basically painting a la prima over our glazing. Yeah, my brush was a little too dirty, but you get the idea. Oh, if you want to, let's see here. You can do it with a palette knife.
let's see. Okay. That's not really the right color, but. Kind of that idea. Again, that's not the right color, right? Everybody can see that. Mm -hmm. So very important, when you mix a color and you say, like I just did, um, and I'm hurrying through, <laughs> sorry, um, a pair, you know, it's yellow, green. So I'm mixing yellow and, uh, yellow and, and blue, and I kind of have a color and I just start painting. You should never do that. When you try out a color, say, I'm mixing that. I'm pretty sure that's what I want. It always looks different on your palette than once you put it on your thing, so on your painting. So once you have a color that you think is pretty close of what you want, don't just start painting the whole area. Do one thing and then step back, stepping back, and then evaluate it from afar. And then you can say, oh, well, that color didn't work. So instead of noodling around and just having painted the whole area really nilly because I didn't find the time to look back real quick, now I would have to scrape the whole thing off. So, how do you make tan? The tan color. Tan color depends. Just one second. So I don't like this color, so I can go with my palette knife and just scrape that off. And now it actually kind of incorporates it a little bit. Now it's a little bit more modern. So you can correct a lot in uh, oil painting. But now I kind of like it. It looks a little bit better. Maybe if I just put some other um, color. But that's the principle. I'm not sure if we can finish that whole painting. And I don't know if you guys are interested in that. But I do want to get into the a la prima today. Um, because again, most people will paint like that. Let me see. I got a different color now. That's the one. There you go. Just a little highlight. Mm -hmm. Not in the right place. But you can see it gives that little oomph there, a little highlight. So you can do that. And then I would do the same thing with the grapes here. Actually do that real quick. Um, I take my grapey color, which is, was the alizarin crimson. I put a tiny bit of white in it. And I'll put that little highlight. You can see it in your photo. That little highlight on there. There you go. Oh, and yeah. immediately, wow, right? I mean, that is easy. Yeah. So that was the demo for the grisaille with the layering technique. Here is my final. That is a close-up. So see you later. Bye.